23rd place Queen's Park Rangers host 11th place Middlesbrough at home on Tuesday evening. So I caught up with Johnny from the Borough Breakdown podcast to find out how Michael Carrick's side have got on this season so far. As usual, my chat will be followed by a few words on Queen's Park Rangers from myself. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and let's get straight into it. Johnny, hello. How are you? Connor, I'm great. Thank you, mate. Thank you so much uh, for having me on. Um, if you ask me about football in terms of my right, meh, bit meh. but outside of that, yeah, I'm all good. Thank you. How's things? Yeah, all good. Cheers. Thank you very much for taking the time to come on. I'm afraid to say we are here to talk about football, obviously, on Tuesday <laughs> evening. QPR v Borough. So um, talk to me about Borough's season so far. Five wins, three draws and five losses under the belt so far. Currently sat in 11th. What have you made of the season so far? Uh, very inconsistent. Uh, the most inconsistent, consistent team, I would say. Um, you know, we have moments of brilliance and then also have moments of madness, which is probably the reason why we're 11th and not top of the league, to be brutally honest. Uh, you know, when that sometimes the good is so good and you go, wow, this is exactly what I want it to be and and this is what I want to see from a football team. And then you see moments where you think, good God, this is like League One, League Two stuff at the back. So um, it has just been a, a very inconsistent start. But, you know, some things look great and some things look that they need to be worked on. But for the... If I was to have to describe the the feeling or the word to describe the season so far, I would say it's frustration, probably because it could be a lot better than what it what it is. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you ended last season in such a rich vein of form under Carrick. I think it was just one loss in your last twelve, and then you missed out on playoffs by just four points. So, what were your expectations going into the season? Is it about hitting the playoffs? Yeah. 100%, kind of 100% uh, about hitting the playoffs this season. You know, we've got the squad which is capable of getting into the playoffs. Um, we have a lot of quality in and around the team. And last season, we should have probably been in the playoffs, to be brutally honest. In term our start was really poor from the first eight games. I think we were on one point. And then you're playing catch up. And then obviously last year you had three or four teams running away with the league really at that point. But this year feels a little bit more open so you can make the mistakes early on. But we have to cut those out now, uh, to be honest. You know, we like I mentioned there, the squad, when you look at it and the manager that we have and football that we've played, really it's a bit of a it's a bit of a failure if we don't get in the playoffs this season, to be brutally honest with you. So yeah. Um when you're sat 11th, you're three points off. You think it's, it's only a couple of good results away from from looking really rosy. But right now, you can you can feel the uncertainty in the fan base, I would say. Um, but yeah, it has to be playoffs this year for us. And how have your summer signings settled in? I know Tommy Conway, he seemingly fit straight in with four yeah. goals from nine. So what about the rest? Love Tommy Conway. Um, absolutely love him. And other players to probably talk about. Aidan Morris has probably been our best signing, to be honest. Uh, came from Columbus Crew, um, US International, and he has just adapted to the English game so, so well um, in this division. Really good at breaking up play, good on the ball, likes to, has a really good relationship with Hayden Hackney in midfield. And it, it's really gives us a good base um, to work from the both work so well together and then just a couple of players probably look out for to say I'm really impressive so far one is Ben Dork you know on loan from Liverpool has just he's just given us something different whereas last year it could become like a, a place where things would move side to side it would become a bit horseshoey but Ben Dork just gives us that more directness going forward in terms of, wing, of a winger and he's creating a lot of chances for us however he is injured at the moment now, so he's out for a few days, so he might not make the game for QPR, which is probably a great thing for you guys, because I would say he's probably been one of our best players. In terms of like looking around like the, the other signings that we had, we've, we've had this season, Edmondson's been solid centre-back. Um, Michael Hamilton hasn't really played, neither has uh, Bergzog much, really, to be honest. Um, so... Overall, I would say it's been a quite a nice mix. It's something that we've needed to build the squad out, but I would say the two or three big standouts are Tommy Conway, um, 
Ben Dork and, and Adam Morris. And who else should Rangers be worried about on Tuesday night of the players that were already in the side? Well, it depends if we turn up, Connor, to be honest. Um, and we, you know, we're struggling to break teams down who like to sit off us in, in that low block. But one player who I absolutely adore is um, Riley McGree, a player who just is on that left-hand side, but you'll see him float across the pitch, not like like levitating, but he will just move from side <laughs> to side quite elegantly. And uh, he will just pick up, in, pick up space in good areas and create good moments and create overloads. And that is kind of what you want from an attacking midfielder. Yeah. Finazaz as well is is really is really strong. Um a bit like a Marmite character on T side to be honest, but he's just a player that similarly to McGree gets in good areas and has a really good pass on him and, and it's a good a good strike on him too. So I would say those are the two main players I would definitely say keep your fans uh look out for. Um, just for a standpoint, I think they're just, just, they're just good players at this level. Now, QPR and Borough have traded fairly blow for blow over the past four appearances, but you did claim a 2-0 win last time at Loftus Road back in March. So to round us off, let's get your score prediction for Tuesday night. Uh, one all. I'm going to say one all. Uh, I, I just don't trust us anymore. Kinda, I really don't. You know, we beat this side's we shouldn't really be beaten comfortably, but then we lose against the sides we shouldn't lose against, and that's typical Boris. So, but I'll go for a one-one draw, kind of if that's all right. Great, sounds good. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat to me today, Johnny, and uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Cheers, Connor. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you so much again to Johnny for jumping on to chat to me about Borough's season so far. You can check out the Borough Breakdown podcast in the link in the description below. It seems Borough have been pretty patchy this season so far, particularly over the past five games. But QPR mustn't let their guard down because we know how well Michael Carrick can get this side playing. They will be eyeing QPR up as a perfect opportunity to get their form back on track ahead of the next international break after this weekend. And of course, despite QPR putting in that much improved performance over the weekend, we're still crucially not scoring goals. Personally, assuming Jake Clark Salter isn't back, I would like to see us set up in that same formation with pretty much the exact same personnel. There is a question of what to do at left back now that Ashby is injured, but personally, I don't think I'd even mind that being Koki Saito again, like we saw against Coventry, given that he didn't exactly sacrifice his attacking qualities. And I do think we are a much better team when he's in it. Seller will obviously start up top again considering we don't have a senior alternative. But I do hope we see Lloyd or even Collie get some minutes if we haven't found the back of the net come the second half. The key thing ultimately though is consistency and I think by starting a very similar team in that same formation we can build on that progress that we saw on Saturday. So in terms of score prediction I'm optimistically going for QPR's second win of the season. I'm going to go 1-0 with Nicholas Madsen to get the only goal of the game. As usual do let me know your own thoughts and score predictions in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this preview and I'll hopefully see you in my next video for my match reaction. Come on you Oz!